So this here is our first sort of dry mock-up of the actual rowing mechanism itself. Um, so I've got a, sort of a quick and dirty version made out of plywood so I can just figure out the geometry and the location of my arms, my knees, my legs, what kind of span of motion and get a bit of a proof of concept before we do a more permanent build out of more proper materials like uh, fiberglass and aluminum. Um, so there's steel bars here that are the sliding rails. This is the sliding seat mechanism. Sorry, not a sliding seat, a sliding rake. And it should be that when I push with my feet here, the string itself is going over a pulley system. So for every foot that I push with my feet, I'm actually going to pull the string by two feet. So I get a two to one mechanical advantage, or mechanical disadvantage with the legs. When I'm pulling on it, every amount of motion from my pulling force is an equal amount of motion with the string. So what I'm trying to figure out now is if this overall geometry, um, and you know what? <laughs> I'm going to need a larger diameter drum at the back. If somebody asked you, well, hey, Robert, yep. could we, let's unspool this from here. And I'm basically going to want you to tug that back and forth, and I'm just going to figure out what the motion is like. Um, you're on? Okay, so, yeah, so now we've got this hooked up with all the mechanism. It's not yet wrapped around the drum to move the bike, but I just want to see if the range of motion is about right. So my goal was to have something that felt like an actual rowboat. And so on a rowboat, you bring right in, you initially push with your legs, your back, and your arms, and then, uh, yeah, so this is as far as I want. Okay, now okay. on the edge of the chair, here yeah. go. Okay. So, to we'll, so let's measure that distance and we'll see what our travel is, because then we'll determine how many revolutions of the crank we want. Okay. So your right. knee, oh, right there. Okay, I'll put that. Okay, I know it's just, okay. we have one of the pants. <laughs> Okay, that goes to you. So it's just about 69 inches. Yeah, right about here. 68, 68 inches. 69 inches, yeah. Okay, great. Well, now we can compute properly <coughs> the diameter on it. The diameter of the drum to take it Yeah, yeah. so I'm figuring that if I, if I do this right, I'm going to be rowing at about 30 to 35 strokes per minute. So then I can correlate that with 68 inches of string pull. Um, into a certain number of crank revolutions. So for instance, right there, if yes. somebody's pedaling and our pedal cadence is 80 RPM, but I'm rowing at 30 strokes per minute, um, then I'm gonna want a drum a size drum. that accommodates that. Exactly, yeah. so a drum size that does about two and a half turns. Um, so. uh, yeah, it's gonna have to go around, if yours only goes 30 and they're trying to do 80, That's right. you'll need a drum that wraps up that much at Twice, yeah, two and a half, about two and a half, right? Yeah, as you know it, but uh, it's actually not like that at all because when I'm rowing at 30, I'm actually pulling for only half that time. The other time I'm going backwards. So it oh. actually works out pretty much consistent. It's okay. actually a fairly similar cadence to the pedal revolution mm. and the rowing revolution. So it'll actually be a similar effective crank diameter. Interesting. Neat. So that's actually going to make for quite a large diameter drum now that I think about it. Because uh, 68 inches divided by pi is going to be big. So if there is <laughs> one, one revolution per pole, it would be pretty big. big yeah. Um, so I might. I Do might a spiral that. like the one on the other machine that has it wraps up more. Well, the thing turn. is, the one on the other machine is it's it's not spinning the crank; it's, it's spinning the hub itself. So normally the wheel spins about three times faster than a crank. Mm -hmm. So because I have this thing effectively going through a crank, it's spinning at about one third the RPM, which means I'm going to need quite a substantially larger drum size, which I actually didn't really think about too much. So I may, given that, need to change this so that the bulk of the gear reduction is not happening at the hub itself, but is happening on a jack shaft. So that the cadence, the RPM of the jack, of the oh, drum itself down is much faster. Is, is, it's closer uh, to the wheel yeah, RPM right. and less like the other one. Interesting, I hadn't thought about that at all. Uh, that's why we build prototypes. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks Rob for the hand. Good. Great. It's good. Okay, so yeah, I can't believe I didn't think about that. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Because, um, yeah, it would end up becoming a drum about like that big around. Oh, 20 something inches, yeah. Yeah, in order to match the. Huh. And yeah, there's no, I mean, physically, we don't even have the room. We could, we could probably do about, I mean, a crank is 175, that's about 7 inches in, uh, in diameter, in radius, so that's. No, yeah, you're not even going to afford room to the ground before you get Yeah, but no, that's, that's not too crazy. Like, if I had the same diameter, like the crank itself, that's basically 8 inches to the bottom mm -hmm. of the crank. So that's a 16-inch diameter. 
Um, and so a 16 inch diameter corresponds to about 43 inches of circumference. And so we're getting in the right ballpark there, but it is kind of ridiculous to imagine that big of a, of a drum around which I'm rowing the thing. So the other possibility is that I could link up, instead of linking up here, have the string loop back around and actually go directly to the wheel somehow. And then I'm at a higher spinning revelation over there. Stuff to ponder. I, uh, I thought I had it figured out, but no. that little bit of math uh, escaped me. Yeah, so what we realized yesterday was that the actual diameter that I would need for the rowing action, given that I was pulling 62 inches of string, was quite a bit larger of a drum than I was initially envisioning. Um, but I, able, I pulled that off okay just by using a 16 inch bicycle rim. This now is the first fully flushed out working prototype of the rowing mechanism that I thought tied in on our, our sun trip bike. Um, so if you look here, the Part of the, the idea that I wanted to explore was a rowing system that felt like rowing on a normal rowboat, so where your legs and your arms could go, both go through the full motion. But I was also intrigued by the idea of changing the ratio from your arm pulling versus what your legs are doing. So in this system here, when you see my arms pulling, I'm basically pulling the rope one for one. So if I pull my arm forward it's about two feet, that's going to wrap and unwrap the drum by two feet's worth of circumference. I do the same thing with my legs, so I push the legs forward, it's actually pulling double the amount of rope because it's going to pulley. So a given amount of leg motion is going to produce twice the rotation on the rear wheel. And I think that's going to be a better overall balance for the uh, uh, leg to arm, or the arm to leg uh, muscle ratios. Um, so yeah, so on the, I basically uh, hacked up an old uh, crank set, an old chain ring on the right, bolted a piece of plywood to it to let me mount a rim as our larger diameter drum. If you look over on the inside here, I've got a much smaller diameter drum around which is wrapped a bungee cord. And so this here pulls the ring, so after I do my rowing stroke, this then pulls it back to rewind the string as I'm doing the recovery motion on the, on the rowing action. And this whole system is on a freewheeling crank set, so... Look over on the right, so as I'm rowing, I'm pulling it here, and then the crank set freewheels, allowing it to reset to the beginning of my rowing position. And then for a person at front who's just pedaling, they're gonna keep those chain rings. I'm gonna keep it there. Um, so if you're just turning the pedals, those chain rings are always rotating like that. And so you get pulses of power where the riders, where the rowers adding power to that mid, uh, to the jack shaft, and then it's just the pedal propelling it while the rower is going back into the reset position on the seat. So if you come over on this side, so yeah, so now you can see the entire rowing action, action capture here. If you want to back up a little bit and uh, so try to get... Oh, I've got that in, oh, you got in there? Yeah, okay. got that in so, there. So as of now, I should be able to lay back arms and feel like I'm actually rowing on a boat. And this is exactly the kind of motion I was hoping to have. And so the big pressure now is the effective gearing that I've got with this rim as my um, drum for the rowing string. Uh, and the pedals at the front about right to the person pedaling is at a similar cadence or rhythm to what I'm doing while I'm rowing. And I think now we're ready to field test. Okay. And if you're there, appropriately wet for being in a rowing bike. unnerving how easily I feel like I could get thrown right off. Oh. <laughs> so I might want to see that. Alright. Okay. Get it, Keith? Uh-oh. Alright. Okay, there we go. 